The Indianapolis Colts have had some big-time receivers in the last few decades, as you had guys like Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, and most recently, T.Y. Hilton. While Michael Pittman has been pretty decent, I feel like the Colts have lacked a truly elite wide receiver for quite some time now. At one point, the subject of today's video was expected to be a first-round pick, was arguably the top receiver in this year's draft class, and somehow fell all the way to the third round. He's been one of the most productive receivers in college football over the last few years, and I think has a chance to be one of the steals of the draft and the star wide receiver for Anthony Richardson for years to come. The guy we're going to be talking about is former North Carolina wide receiver Josh Downs, and in today's video, I want to introduce you to who Josh Downs is, talk about his insane college career, and why he could save the Indianapolis Colts. But before we get started, be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new to the channel and love football, let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Josh Downs. So going back in time, football runs in the Downs family, as his father Gary played seven years in the NFL after a great career at NC State. His brother is also Caleb Downs, who was a five-star recruit, the number one safety in the class of 2023, and is a true freshman at Alabama. Football was definitely a hobby for them. His dad said, quote, When they were younger, Josh was bigger, stronger, and faster, so they didn't really compete against each other. For a while, though, Caleb wanted nothing to do with football. He didn't want to be anything like Josh, and when he started playing football, he said, No, I'm not doing that. But Josh absolutely loved the sport, though, and was committed to it from a young age. He had some factors working against them, though. He said, I've always been a shorter guy since I was in elementary school. I just work harder than everybody, and I know I have to do that because I'm smaller. His dad said his goal was always to be the number one receiver in the nation, but due to his size, a lot of people were always looking for someone else. Josh was only focused on what he could control, though, and started to take his training very seriously. He began to master the route tree, and he took real pride in that. He said, ever since I was in 8th or ninth grade, that's when I started running routes more and focusing on that. Even in high school, scouts were focusing on other players on the team. Josh would arrive at North Gwinnett High School in Georgia and played alongside future Iowa star running back Tyler Goodson, Michigan star corner DJ Turner, and future North Carolina quarterback Cade Fortin. As a sophomore, Josh would break out as he had an 1,000-yard season and college recruiters started to take notice. His dad was also in the recruiting business, as he was the recruiting coordinator and running backs coach at East Tennessee State. But he still found a way to get to all of Josh's games. He was well on his way to following his father's path to NC State, it seemed, but something changed when he visited North Carolina a second time during his junior year of high school. So where was he going to go? Well, he got interest from schools such as Michigan, NC State, Ohio State, Penn State, Georgia Tech, and North Carolina, but ultimately, he chose the Tar Heels. To some, it was a surprise, though. One factor that really helped was his uncle. His name was Dre Bly, he was a, and he was a former NFL corner, and, was, and at the time, he was the corners coach for North Carolina. Mac Brown also helped a lot. Downs said, quote, When I committed, I felt like I finally found a family. A lot of other teams were worried about my size, but Carolina was always with me through thick and thin. Carolina is just a different feel, and it's still like that to this day. They stuck by their word, and they were real coaching staff. With him choosing the Tar Heel, some wondered if it would have an effect on the family, obviously in a joking way. As Josh said, quote, It just opened my eyes differently than, I did, than it did the first time. At first, my dad was kind of sad about, about picking a rival school over his alma mater, but in the end, I knew it was the best decision for me. He had now committed to his school and had a lot of hype because of his insane high school production. He had a great senior year and would end up getting invited to the Army All-American game, where once again, he wasn't the most high-profile receiver there. He had a 9-catch, 120-yard performance against some of the best competition in high school, and this helped both his confidence and scouts' view of him. What did the scouts have to say? Well, one said, quote, He wants the ball in the biggest moment. His route running and short area quickness make him a problem to face. Downs has a name for himself by getting open and being near impossible to catch in the open field. He shows off his next level speed, which earned him a 4.47 40-yard dash time. Combining that with a productive career, he was the full package. Downs had 187 career catches for 3,019 yards and 32 touchdowns. According to 24-7 Sports, Josh Downs was a four-star recruit, the number 21 wideout, and the 119th best player in the class of 2020. So, how did he end up doing at North Carolina? Well, let's take a look. When Downs arrived in North Carolina, he'd be stuck behind both Deami Brown and Daz Newsome. He'd appear in three regular season games. He had a touchdown against NC State, but he was getting somewhat frustrated that he was barely playing. He said, quote, I definitely was a little discouraged at times because I wasn't playing. 
the wide receivers coach Lonnie Galloway told me to keep working at practice and said when Daz leaves, it's your. That is exactly what would happen as both Daz Newsom and Deami Brown would opt out of their bowl game and against Texas A&M, Downs showed what he was made of. He caught four passes for 91 yards and two touchdowns and that was the Josh Downs coming out party. I clearly remember that game and I knew that guy was next up. Everyone expected Downs to be the next big thing and that is exactly what would end up happening as in the first six games he'd go nuts. He had eight catches in each of his first five games and had a touchdown or more in all of them. He had over 100 yards against Virginia Tech and Duke, had over 200 yards and two touchdowns against Virginia, and also had scores against Georgia Tech and Georgia State. Against Florida State, he had nine catches for 121 yards and then had a career high 11 catches for 96 yards against Miami. After that, he'd have 10 more against Notre Dame before he would cool off for the remainder of the season. He wouldn't go over the 100-yard mark against Wake, Pitt, Wofford, or NC State, but was still a factor as he caught 28 passes in his last four outings. He became one of the top receivers in college football, and after three catches for 62 yards against South Carolina, finished the 2021 season with insane numbers. He caught 101 passes for 1,335 yards and eight scores. That was with Sam Howell at quarterback, and in 2022, he'd now have Drake May. In his first game against Florida A&M, he caught nine passes for 78 yards and two touchdowns, and then had two more scores in week two against Notre Dame. He had eight catches and 100 yards against Virginia Tech, six catches and a touchdown against Miami, and nine catches for 126 yards against Duke. After that, he had 11 catches for 102 yards and two touchdowns against Pitt, 15 catches for 166 yards and a touchdown against Virginia, and 11 catches for 154 yards and three touchdowns against Wake Forest. I feel like I'm just reading video game numbers at this point, but that is how dominant Downs was at North Carolina. His last two games against NC State and Georgia Tech were underwhelming, but he'd have one more show. Against Clemson in the ACC Championship game, he caught 11 passes for 100 yards, and while the Tar Heels got blown out, Downs went out on a high note. He finished the 2022 season with 94 catches for 1,029 yards and 11 scores. He truly had a record-breaking career at North Carolina, as in really two years of starting, he was fourth all-time in receiving yards with 2,483, his 22 touchdown catches were second best in school history, and his 202 catches was third all-time for Tar Heel. He decided to declare for the 2023 NFL Draft, and many expected him to be a first-round pick. Going into the pre-draft process, one scout said, quote, Downs posted off-the-charts production over the last two years as an undersized slot player with oversized will. His confidence jumps off the tape, and he has proved himself to be better at catching through contact than you might expect. In two of his three years at North Carolina, he was the guy for quarterbacks Sam Howell and Drake May, who are both some of the top players at their position and will both be in the NFL soon. According to NFL Mock Database, his highest projection this year is when he was ranked as a late first-round pick. Throughout the draft process, he'd go up and down, fluctuating between that 30th and 50th best prospect mark. By the time the 23 draft actually came around, he was projected to be in the first half of the second round, as he was eventually taken with the 79th overall pick in the third round by the Indianapolis Colts. Personally, as a Colts fan, I was really excited about this one, and he said, quote, it's huge to follow my dad into the NFL and have this opportunity. My dad was picked 95 and I was picked 79, so I beat my dad in that one. The Colts ended up getting a steal as they selected a player who was a potential first round talent in the third round. He also alluded to the fact he's really excited for Reggie Wayne. I mentioned him at the beginning of the video, but he is now the Colts wide receivers coach. He said he really liked the idea of going to Indianapolis after his pre-draft conversations with Wayne, and he said, quote, he told me he needed him on his squad. I really took that to heart because Reggie Wayne is a great receiver. He said it's not even close, and he told me I was the best receiver in my group, and I had first round guys in that group. He told me I'm explosive, and he loves to see me play. That's really high praise from Reggie, and while he's still trying to figure out how to be a wide receivers coach in the NFL, I think both of them will form a great bond, and he'll now probably be matched up with their new quarterback, Anthony Richardson. While both of these guys are still pretty raw, it would not surprise me if they form one of the best young duos in the NFL next year. I think no matter what, Downs is going to have good production, as he's always done that when he's gotten the chance, and he could maybe be the next T.Y. Hilton for the Colts. It's still a little early to tell, but I'm optimistic that he was a steal, and I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. But what do you guys think? If you're a Colts or a North Carolina fan, what do you think of Josh Downs? Who do you think will be the Colts' top wide receiver next year? And what receiver or player should I cover from the 2023 NFL Draft next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. 
hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace. <laughs>